the popularization that happened around mid early seventies was, and I don't know the specific catalyst for all that, but uh, my high school Sunday school class in the church I grew up in that at least we spent two years with the teacher talking about the late great planet earth. Really? Wow. Uh, now it was a mainline church where, you know, expository study of the Bible, inductive study of the Bible wasn't the preferred way of reading the Bible, but, yeah. uh, but, um, uh, one, one thing I mentioned in the article is we have to pay attention to sociological factors often when we look at these, especially these eschatological shifts. Um, Norm Cohn wrote this uh, work um, in, uh, you can help me with the title, it's footnoted in, in, the, in the article, um, about the whole millennial phenomenon as a sociological phenomenon. And this is certainly true of the origins of dispensationalism, uh, but I would want to put my mind, in terms of this popularization in the 70s, I want to try to put my finger on some things, you know, social upheaval, uncertainty, certainly coming out of the 60s and the protest movements. Um, and then you had the American malaise where things just felt bad. You had hyperinflation. Um, and then perhaps, too, just the, the waning voice of mainstream Christianity. I'm talking about mainline, where the preaching of the Bible wasn't I mean, once you deconstruct the Bible with critical methodologies, you know, what do you say on a Sunday morning? Mm -hmm. And the churches that were vital and felt a sense of urgency and so forth, you know, those tended to be um, Bible focused. And by that time, so many good Bible focused churches have been depending on, say, Dallas Seminary and other similar institutions. I've, I've heard a <clears throat> story um, that I think was fairly typical. It was told to me as a typical story. Uh, there's a very well-known Presbyterian church in the East. It's now PCA, but back then it was still mainline. And the pastor was a sort of a prince of pulpiteers. He was a very notable expository preacher. And it, the church was in a United Presbyterian church. And he would... He would tell his young men who wanted to go to seminary, who were going to the ministry, go to Princeton, just get your degree, just don't argue with anybody, and I'll mm -hmm. make sure you have a church when you get out. So put up with a liberal theology. It's just an expedience. That same pastor, one year when he went to speak at a Bible conference, when he learned there was an amillennial speaker on the on the agenda, he left the conference and wouldn't speak. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so um, so within the main, within the Northern Presbyterian church in particular at that time, there was a certain pragmatism toward just getting along with the, you know, tolerating the liberalism. We'll get our Bible from the Bible conferences. We'll get our Bible from Dallas seminary. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll depend up, upon those conservative institutions. And perhaps there was a little bit of a hesitation toward to depend upon the conservative reformed institutions because of the history of tensions, you know, with the, the Presbyterian uh, splinters of the, of the 20th century. So in essence, what I'm saying, the, 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 the Bible conference movement the, and, 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 the, and the dispensational institutions became the training ground for a lot of, in this case, Northern Presbyterians. 